My name is Evan Reckon Mario Marsh, and this is my story. Fear, false evidence that appears real. Watch this. Cheating on me, but I'm still here Maybe it's the doubt, I feel here She could be chilling, not doing the thing Got why I do my brain Accuse her of the same game I get myself fired before I quit Hate her hurt full flash Bitches talking shit Misunderstandings on a temporary situation Lifelong choices vary I compel a prepare me Scary from the shootings, fear use me Shattered dreams abuse me No, fight for getting here Caption season Choke hold to bleed it. Get the beans and lie lead. How you supposed to? Extermination to the link that provides satisfaction. Winning is a race that requires work reaction. Fear's no longer an option when you got nothing to lose. Fraction of the time you told me you ain't gonna ever be shit. Deal with it, G. Code, D, Bo, Z, Cove, and throw. Every record code. Whoever you is will lie on your inner. Even when you play dinner, pull a reversal contender. We sorry, I apologize, we should've known I can see the disguise, my heart is on my sleeve Cause this is just a rough cut, the world don't give a They can do that, it's they God given right You can't expect them to see your visions in sight Love is unconditional, family is traditional, material superficial The streets make you official, any other way, your buzz will sizzle My nigga, I used to listen, had compassion, but still mission. Remain number one condition, assisting me with the label. Corner roof, bus stations, under tables, sleeping. Wherever I need to be, as long as music. Got to grind, get my point across with music. Until I hear gunfire, I'm a nervous wreck. Soon as that shell hit the pavement, resurrect. What it means for war damage, include demolition. 300 means a vision, this division, a special forces, hip hop. Get a real job, just fake, play a stop. You make money off of them, do it yourself, that's a real job, huh, you need help. Wealth only comes to those who believe it, get your Bible and you read it. Lift it up the Phoenix rising, deep from your heart. Ladies and G's, I go by the name of DJ Tantrum, and what you about to listen to is internationally known, but built in the streets of Hiram Clark, Houston, Texas. Matter of fact, tell them what your name is, man. It's that every record from pretenders to contenders. It's that every record. What up? It's that every record from pretenders to contenders. It's that every record. What up? It's that every record. It's that every record. What up? It's that every record. Huh? Every record, baby. What up? Focus, focus. Uh, you know, being a rapper, you know what I'm saying, just, it's been a long road, okay, so how did I first start getting involved in the music game, alright, <clears throat> how I got, how I got involved in the music game was, you know, uh, I think it all started in high school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I played football in high school. And then, you know what I'm saying? I graduated from Madison Senior High. And then, you know what I'm saying? 
I went to Texas A&M University in College Station. You know what I'm saying? But it really started in high school. You know what I'm saying? They had, I believe it was a Cinco de Mayo play. And I, and it was like, probably like my senior year. You know what I'm saying? We would always, <clears throat> yeah, we had a studio in her own Clark called the 713 Lab. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was, you know what I'm saying, ran by, you know what I'm saying, the Tech Sons. You know what I'm saying? I haven't heard much out of them lately, but, you know, they had like a crew of DJs. You know what I'm saying? You had Tech Sons. You know what I'm saying? You had DJ Risk in there. You had J Real. You know what I'm saying? You had C Styles and J Real and Tantrum. DJ Tantrum. You know what I'm saying? They're known all over. So, but they used to have a studio. You know what I'm saying? We all co worked in there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was the whole. You know what I'm saying? That's where it began. And that was during high school, high school ish time ish and then you know what I'm saying I graduated from you know what I'm saying uh high school from Madison Senior High in Harold Clark and then after I left from Madison I went uh, three days later I graduated that May like May 28th or something and three days later I showed up to Texas A&M to, to walk on for the football team Okay, so, you know what I'm saying, I walked on a football team, and, you know what I'm saying, there were some dudes around, I don't even remember those guys' names, but I hope they're doing good, you know what I'm saying, they were in the music, they had a more of a, a outcast-ish style, you know, guy wearing no shirt, wearing a big old, one of those Chinese hats, you know what I'm saying, and wearing a backpack, you know what I'm saying, got on there rapping. So it was like, you know what I'm saying, it was cool. So I was like, yeah, they was like, yo, we're going to do a show with the talent show on campus tonight. And I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? And then, yo, I, I don't know where the footage is. I used to have it, but I just remember. You know what I'm saying, I got on stage. And this was the first time I got on stage to rap. And for some weird reason, I just get on the mic and just start going off and then Everybody in the room busted out. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn! You know what I'm saying? I jump off stage. I see girls jumping on me, grabbing me, hanging off of me. And I was like, wow. Uh, that was that was like super, super amazing. And I think that's when I got bit by the bug. You know, even in high school, you know what I'm saying? Uh... I participated in the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. I was probably like 16 or 17, you know, uh, in the, when the rodeo was in the Astrodome, Astrodome, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, you know what I'm saying, have that whole stadium packed. However many people the, the Astrodome holds, that thing was filled up from the bottom to the top. My parents were like right there in the front rows or whatnot. And, you know... You know, when I was performing, you know what I'm saying, I had that big jumbo trying on me. And then, you know what I'm saying, I slammed the cow. Boom. And I just heard, ooh, all amongst the whole Astrodome. And I'm 16 years old. And I'm like filling up Astrodomes or participating in this event that it was just an experience. Well, anyway, so the Astrodome, and that's when I had my first, first taste of, like, Coliseum style filled with people. And, but back to college, I get on stage and I rap, and, you know, it's all entertainment. We're all in front of people, and it was just like, you know what I'm saying, it was amazing. I was in the newspaper, you know what I'm saying, I was known around campus and, you know, doing my thing. I, I I participated in the entertainment industry, but I didn't know what the entertainment industry was about. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, since I've grown up in that atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was, it's like normal to me. So I get to Texas A&M, you know, I rap, and then girls are jumping out the crowd, grabbing on me, and I was like, I've got to have more of this. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Texas A&M, Texas A&M, that was where I st first started rapping, like on a stage, and that was due to my friends, you know what I'm saying, so I get to Texas A&M, and 
I bombed out of school. I'll be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, playing football, you know, it was just, you know what I'm saying? No mentorship, no proper mentorship or my hard-headedness about, you know, class or whatnot, you know. So maybe it's a little bit of both. Who knows? But, all right, I go to the mill. I get, I get out. Of, I go to Texas A&M. I get out of Texas A&M. And then I started trying to do the street thing. Well, I was always in the streets, you know what I'm saying? In high school, the football practice, you know what I'm saying? Walking back and forth to the house. I was always walking down the street. I had to walk from high school to where I lived at. You know, where my parents lived at, you know, probably good two, three miles every day. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying, you just walk it through the streets, you know, you just pick up on stuff, stuff you see, on repetitiveness. So I go back to the streets, you know, where I earned the football from, hanging out with guys. You know, I was hanging out with some guys. For some weird reason, my whole life, I just got along with bosses. And, like, people who were, you know what I'm saying, you have your crack dealers on the corner. I was hanging out with the bricks, the guys who were breaking down the bricks and chemists who were cooking up the zones and cookies. I find myself hanging with these guys, you know what I'm saying, career criminals. So this is where, you know what I'm saying, I got a little bit into the, into the game, you know what I'm saying. I always had a love for guns, you know. You know, I always had a love for guns, you know. It got a Glock 9, you know what I'm saying? It had two 38s. I had a SKS, a AK-47, and, you know, and I wasn't really into the drug selling part, but I was into the protection of the drug dealers. You know what I'm saying? Anything go wrong, you know what I'm saying? Uh, bust heads open. That was, that was, that's, that's my clout in the streets in Houston, Texas. And you can ask anyone that know me. You know what I'm saying? Who I am. I mean, I'm on the south side. I'm not saying I was on the north side doing all that stuff. And, you know what I'm saying? A while back, you know what I'm saying? It was all south side. You know what I'm saying? North side. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really go on each other's sides. <clears throat> so I was in the sunny side area. Her own Clark area. You know what I'm saying? That, that, was, that, was, that was my turf. So, you know what I'm saying? So... I go to the streets and then, you know what I'm saying, one night, you know what I'm saying, we over there, you know what I'm saying, boy moving birds, bricks, safes, tables full of money. I'm in there with loaded assault rifles and, you know what I'm saying, one night my girlfriend comes up to me and starts crying saying that, hey, I want to go to the movies tonight, you know what I'm saying. So she wanted to go to the movies and she started crying and I go start talking, man, yo, my girl want to go. And then no, I stay smoke a blunt. And I was like, I look at her, she starts crying. So I was like, man, I gotta go, man. So I bounced. And when I bounced, they had a full fledged shootout. You know what I'm saying? I left my guns. So, you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's, they had a big gun fight out there in Sunnyside. A couple people died that night. And it was on the newspaper, in which my mom got pissed about. Uh, what had happened was, as soon as I pulled off and, and they saw that I left, you know what I'm saying, guys, armed, an uh, armed guy goes over there with a gun and puts it up to my friend's head and made him walk in the house. And as soon as he opened the door, he lets off a shot in the back of his head, which God, thankfully, it scraped the back of his head and his mom is in the back room sleep and they're having a gun fight in the living room. Meanwhile, I'm at the movies with my girl. I come back the next morning and, you know what I'm saying, I see people up in there. I see police walking out, unzipping uh, the sofa covers on the sofa, you know, drenched in blood. My boy's in the hospital. The police took all the guns and, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So nobody really went to jail. And you know what I'm saying? I had little homies up in there, you know what I'm saying? 15, 16, or whatever. The boys grabbed the guns and went out there to start firing out in the open public area, striking like two people and killed them. So the police show up, take everything, and then, you know what I'm saying? 
And then they gave the guns back, but they kept the banana clips. So that was that right there. You know what I'm saying? We was, and you know what I'm saying? We was up in there. We was still living the rapper's lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? We was jamming a lot of, uh, you know what I'm saying, hot boys. You know what I'm saying? DJ Screw. You know what I'm saying? We was listening to Screw music, just doing, you know what I'm saying? Slanging, slanging majorly. You know what I'm saying? And just doing what the music said. You know, I never tried to be a bad person, you know what I'm saying? I always tried to stay on the up and up and, you know what I'm saying, handle business all the time. I know I get a little bit of silly at times, but I just know how how serious life can get. And this is why I earned, a, you know, a comedic view of, you know what I'm saying, how life should try to be close to happy friends. You know what I'm saying? No, I ain't trying to make no enemies, nothing but friends. And this is the honest to God truth. So this is how the music was. You know what I'm saying? Jamming Lil Wayne. The block is hot. The block is hot. Straight out the block. Yo, trusting no man. Got a steam and swayze. I swear, Evan crazy. You know what I'm saying? And we up in there, you know what I'm saying? Doing our thing. After the gunfight, my buddy's uh, older cousin, a female, she worked for Morgan Stanley Dean with her. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, yo, I like, you know, so I like your hustle and whatever, but you need to stop this. You know what I'm saying? Come work with me over at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter in Greenway Plaza. So, you know, I start working up in there with her. The Green the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter thing, it happened kind of before the whole gunfight over on the south side of Houston. And, you know, I was kinda going there working at Morgan Stanley. Well, interning at Morgan Stanley and doing the streets and then after the gunfight she was like yo you better get out of here that window's going to shut and the football the accolades the trophies you know what I'm saying it's all going to mean nothing cuz you might die I go to the military to to the Navy SEAL program okay the Navy SEAL program you know I did the basic hardcore principles over and over and over for probably about three of my four years. So I have the I have one of the most difficult part of the training, like seriously deeply embedded in me. Alright, so before before I could prolong in my Navy SEAL career, I come home and my dad is like, hey, you know what I'm saying? He saw, I don't know what he saw, but he said that I was, I was walking around looking like I wanted to kill people. I, where, where he got this from, I didn't know. So I get back to Coronado, California and tell him I'm done. It, I didn't, it didn't go like that. It was just some, you know, minor disrespect from the Navy SEALs who were in class with me to the SWIC guys. Okay, the SWIC are the boat drivers who drop off us to, you know, saying if it's a water op or we got to do something where water is part of whatever, where we got to go. They got a crew of good people called Swick. Okay, those are your boat drivers or whatever else they have them do. But, you know, saying there was some disrespect. They gave us a cheer and then nobody said nothing to them and I straight chewed them out. I was already had my opinion from my dad. And, you know, so, there go the Navy SEALs. All right, I leave. And, but even though I was going through my Navy SEAL stuff, I still found time to, you know, hit up clubs, go freestyle. I was doing shows up in San Diego, you know what I'm saying, traveling back and forth to L.A. And, you know what I'm saying, I was still in, indulged in the music. And, you know what I'm saying, and then, like, I got, like, got, you know what I'm saying, I got married. And then, you know what I'm saying, I, you know what I'm saying, I got a, I got a wife saying, go kill. I got parents saying, don't kill. And then, you know what I'm saying, but all in the midst of this, they see I got mad, mad hustle. You see what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying, I was I was just looking at the whole Navy SEAL thing like fun and games. I could either hustle or stack bodies. And, you know, now that I'm a little bit older, you know, I kind of just like, I don't want to kill people. Yeah, I don't think that's like really cool. 
And then the 9 11 thing, I was in Navy SEAL training, eating food, and then it was like, your planes. And then we went to Red Alert. They started deploying like crazy. You know what I'm saying? The whole chopper full of my friends, you know what I'm saying, got, got killed. My classmates got killed. You know what I'm saying? And luckily, my dad telling me whatever. Um, I saved myself a death. You know what I'm saying? So, I thank him for that. Anywho, yeah, so that's the whole Navy SEAL thing. But I was still, you know what I'm saying, going to clubs on the weekends and still rapping and, you know what I'm saying, listening to music and everything. And then I get out, you know what I'm saying, I get out the military and then I started going to L.A. more, you know what I'm saying, hitting up movie sets. That's where I worked with Suge Knight. You know what I'm saying? That's why I worked with, you know what I'm saying, many of the major studios, the NBCs, the CBSs, you know what I'm saying, different projects. Who wants to be a millionaire? You know what I'm saying? Let's make a deal. You know what I'm saying? I got I met some good friends over there um, in Beverly Hills. You know, Richard Bowman, the fashion. That's where I started the runway, the modeling and everything. You know, it was it was a nice ride. So I love LA. I love LA with a passion, but you know, being from Texas, you know, we we just don't go out and get down any kind of way, especially when you're not at home. You know what I'm saying? So I had, you know what I'm saying, I had my whole run up in LA and you know, I had fun, I learned, I performed every night. You know, if you go to my YouTube page you can see basically many, probably like ninety percent of the shows I've done. You know, and when you listen to those tracks or those videos, you know, you could probably understand where I was at mentally. <clears throat> so, so that's L.A. I come back to Houston after L.A. No, I go on tour. I go on tour. I, I got linked up with a tour circuit. I've been touring for like the past eight years. I'm, I'm no longer a studio artist. I'm a touring artist who will make money off tours now so you know what I'm saying so you know what I'm saying so but I came back to Houston then I went back but the thing is is that I got a, a backpack no from San Diego I got on a uh, got on a Greyhound bus and went to LA did some work brought everything back to I lost most of my stuff so if you're gonna be a rapper and you're just starting out be prepared to like lose like most basically all your stuff so make sure you pack light okay don't be going nowhere with no three four five bags and all that stuff man you pack one two pair of pants two shirts a couple pair of underwear and socks and some good looking shoes you know what I'm saying so I come back and then I end up catching a Greyhound bus back out to LA with a backpack with nothing basically and you know what I'm saying, so, you know what I mean, and you know what I'm saying, there was more stuff that happened in there, like going up to it, driving up to Atlanta, rapping out there in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, I lived in Atlanta for a little while, and then, you know what I'm saying, came back to Texas, and then went out there to LA, worked with some more people, I end up, so I toured like six months out the year, you know what I'm saying, I toured from like August to like April every year, so, you know what I'm saying, so, you know what I'm saying, you gotta get tours if you're gonna be a rapper or something like that, singers or whatever, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, you gotta tour, you know what I'm saying, so, but yeah, right now I'm a touring artist, so, you know what I'm saying, but going through all these things, you know, I learned a lot, <clears throat> I learned a lot, like, you know what I'm saying, like how the business works, things that I see others do that I needed done, and when you're going through this stuff, you kind of get a sense of, you know, what you have to do to get yourself in that spot, you know, music videos, I was like, well, and, you know what I'm saying, but I always been a, I was always a part of photography, you know, photography, pictures, rapping, and, you know, so I started getting into motion pictures, you know what I'm saying, filming my own stuff, doing my own things like that, and just, you know, working on my own stuff, you know, but, you know, and it just, it just, you know, going through the game, you're going to learn more stuff, obviously, than rapping, all right, 
and you know, and sometimes that stuff helps. So you know, I you know I did what I can working with other artists. You know, saying putting on who I can when I can, but I can't really help nobody until I help myself. Yeah, I told that boy Evan. I said, "Hey, man, get on the bus. Go out there to, you know, what I'm saying, go out there to, uh, go to Los Angeles. Yeah, go to Los Angeles. Get on the bus. Go walk around to figure out what the game's about. Yeah, I told him to go to New York too. Yeah, I told him to even." Fly out to Japan, yeah, yeah. I told them, yeah, I'm an A and R, yeah, yeah. I even told them to go over there. I hooked him up with Suge Knight too, yeah. You know what I'm saying? All them studios he worked at, I put him there. You feel me? So you talking about when you work with A and R's? You know what I'm saying? Just listen to what they gotta say, all right? Because if it wasn't for A and R's, they they weren't gonna be able to help you out. You feel me? So yeah, yeah. I'm ever wrecking, huh? Me. So get to work and make something happen. Walk around till you figure that stuff out. You know what I'm saying? Make a bunch of friends and you hustle and don't stop for nothing. You understand? So yeah. So whatever Evan is sitting here telling y'all, I'm the one who told him to do it. You got it? All right. Good luck and congratulations. So look. So, you know what I'm saying? But I do what I can. And you know, I've been screwed over, you know, stolen from, beat up, whatever. It's, it's gonna happen in the game. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make enemies. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got to learn. You got to learn to just take care of business. And, you know, there are going to be people that's going to get irate. They could be wrong as day. It don't matter who right and wrong. Anything stupid happen, any, everything could be over, like, that fast. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful on both sides. Just because you're right doesn't mean you're going to live through the through whatever the outcome is so just be careful with that and you can't be upset about anything that's going wrong you know what I'm saying you gotta you know what I'm saying you gotta come back from that stuff you just gotta work through it you know what I mean so yeah LA I did all that then touring then I go to L I go to New York I, I work with a good producer out there by the name of Jennifer Ruffalo you know what I'm saying? She's out there in uh, Park Slope-ish area. She's probably like 10 minutes from Park Slope. You know what I'm saying? I worked over there in, you know what I'm saying, Manhattan at the big studios. You know what I'm saying? I stopped by all the record labels. You know what I'm saying? I stopped by Universal or the Def Jam. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't hearing nothing. And then, you know what I'm saying, so then I worked with an independent label. You know what I'm saying? LaSunk by Jennifer Ruffalo. She's a very, very talented producer. She's a female, you know, but I love working with her. You know what I'm saying? So big shout out to East Coast, LaSonk, Jennifer Ruffalo. And, you know, I went to New York actually twice, probably like three times, I believe. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in New York City and, you know what I'm saying? The, the third time I worked with uh, Spellbound and uh, she's... Uh, Dame Grease's mom, and you know, they're like subsidiaries of Rough Riders. And you know, I went out there and worked with that studio. So, you know, I have knowledge about the whole industry on both coasts. So, yeah, I worked with them. And you know, work one thing that I learned <clears throat> from working with the music studios or whatnot is that if, if you're an artist and you go work at a studio per se, you are in control of everything. You can't go to a studio, sit up, and expect someone to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, some people get it that good. So, you know what I'm saying? To them, this might be wrong. But to the person that has nothing, nothing, nothing but a little bit of clout, you know what I'm saying? You got to know how to produce. And if you don't know how to produce, get on YouTube. And if you have to do it the hood, street way, get on YouTube. How do I use Pro Tools? How do I record with Pro Tools? How do I edit with Pro Tools? How do I do this? And just put it on YouTube and there'll be videos and you sit there and listen to them. And then you're going to have to do the business. You know what I'm saying? You have to record yourself. You're going to be in charge of collaborations. You're going to be in charge of videos. You're going to be in charge of, for your well-being as well as all the artists, producers, and whoever owns the place. you got to be accountable to all these people, the upper echelon. So it, it, once you start diving deeper into the industry, of course you're going to learn some stuff. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's basically how it goes. The reason why I'm saying this is because I did I only did probably like just showing up, sleeping, recording at, when I waited on the producer and writing. I was I was firing with two guns instead of all fifty. Probably about five to ten, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of linking deals together, still working with people. And, you know, yeah, I mean, you, you talking a good game will only get you so far. But, you know what I'm saying, through your work and action that provide, you know, money, cash results, along with happy clients is what you really, really, really want to strive for. Yeah, so that's New York. All right. I love New York. It snows. Lasunk, Jennifer Ruffalo. I fly out to Japan to go work with uh, another artist that I work with, a uh, Switch Ill. I get to Tokyo. I get to. Uh, I get to. Uh, I flew into Narita Airport or Narsha Airport. You know what I'm saying? I flew from Los Angeles to New York, and then I caught a flight from. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I caught a flight. I, I go to New York. I go back to LA and then I fly to to I don't I believe it was uh I don't know if it was O'Hare, but I think I hit that East Coast again and I flew out for like twenty two hours or something, like twenty three hours or something, flew straight across the water. I get down there and you know what I'm saying I worked with Switch Hill, you know, but while I was in New York the second time, you know, I brought Switch Hill out there to audition for G Unit Records. You know what I'm saying? But they weren't really trying to sign any artist. They signed some kid. I never heard out of him again. But Switch Hill, if you look at my YouTube page, you can see the performance from Switch Hill. But yeah, that was G Unit. And, you know, always be prepared for the future. I mean, even if you do become number one, you still got to be prepared for what's to come. So, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was a whole New York thing. And, you know, working with the record labels and, you know, getting the no's, getting the yeses. I go back to L.A. and then I fly out to Japan, back through East Coast and back out to, out to Japan. And so I got to get out there, Rapungi, Tokyo. You know, we go to the studio. We made, we made some tracks and, you know, and it was an experience. You know what I'm saying? So... I get back to L.A. and, you know what I'm saying, do some more work with Paramount and TV One, where they're inside each other, but just adding to my mini list of many accomplishments. So, you know, I got to see a lot. I got to do a lot. You know, so much stuff has happened. It's like the stories start blending in together. So it's kind of hard to, like, you know, fixate on one point and carry it out, you know, touring. I'm hitting 42 to 50 cities, and, you know, it, new city, everybody was uh, rap and break down and then go to the next city, and then you start, it's just like all a big mush of fun, girls, alcohol, traveling, and it's just like, so, forgive me if you hear any inconsistencies because I might be zoning out and like you know going off on a tangent I was in New York but yeah I was at the beach at South Padre you know what I'm saying it was just like so but yeah South Padre Island is the best tour I've ever done <clears throat> working with Inertia Tours President CEO under Chad Hart all right and yes I am the president and CEO of Mastermind Alliance Publishing. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you know, any advice that I have to any artist is be prepared to learn your craft. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have to, everybody's not going to help you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Get it out of the way early. Learn everything about any type of work you do. You know what I'm saying? Do the studying. You know what I'm saying? It's, you might have to learn some studio stuff to record yourself. And, yo, if, if you know what I'm saying, to pay an engineer to go up in there, you're going to be cutting into your pay. If you could build beats, too, shit, build your own beats. But you, but then you're going to have to make sure your beats go just as hard as you, like Kanye West. Kanye West don't even have to rap. He could sell beats. You know what I'm saying? 
So, you know what I'm saying? So you got to be multifaceted like that and keep to your low overhead, you know, the money that goes out, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, that's any advice I would have. Be prepared to learn everything about the game, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Clubs, 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 clubs. Go up in there, rap. If you have to find karaoke, go up in there, rap on that, practice. You know what I'm saying? And breathe. You know what I'm saying? When you're rapping, just make sure you breathe. Make sure you're a good MC presence. You know what I'm saying? And see, I, I freestyle all the time. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why none of my tracks, you can hear me freestyling. But I started recently. I started, well, not recently. Well, for the past couple years, I've been recording the freestyles and just throwing them up. And you know what I'm saying, and keep coming up with new material, new material, new material, new material. And you know what I'm saying, I got some other business ventures I'm dealing with, like the oil. You know what I'm saying, I'm the first rapper in the game that that I, I, I could sell oil. You know what I'm saying, I could sell oil. You know what I'm saying, so I, I am in the oil game. So, you know what I'm saying, so that's, for the most part, that's that's everything that you know what I'm saying? I'm the first rapper in the oil game. So let's make that clear right now. You could probably look at the uh, date on the YouTube page when you hear some other rapper jumping out talking about oil. They copying off of me. All right. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We spread out to, I forgot about Europe. I go out to Europe and, you know what I'm saying? I worked, I worked in some, uh, I went out there, I was banging chicks, but I was freestyling in some of the in some of the little coffee houses where they have mics and stuff set up. So I did do Europe too, Europe and Japan. So Europe, Japan, and the United States in a 42 city tour. So I'm like all over the world. You know what I'm saying? From grinding, hustle, and I'm probably relevant in probably about 50 million homes, 50 to 75 million houses around America and overseas too. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got like major, major, major clout. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be smart. You got to know where you're going. And when you get there, you got to know when to be quiet. You got to know when to go gas on it. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure you get all that stuff in order and keep your mind in any situation. You keep, you keep control of all that stuff. So... But anyway, yeah, I'm like totally excited and, you know, and even in L.A., I worked with another studio called Track 3 Studios with a young Q and Professor, two of the best producers in the game that I've worked with and beat makers, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, when you get opportunities, you got to like, when you get opportunities, you got to capitalize off of them. You gotta learn what you need to know to pass the test. You gotta learn the programs. You know, so even if you do have to press record and go run up there, luckily I had people to do it for me. But at the end of the day, you know, you got bills and you gotta pay that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You get you you work you an artist in the studio and you the only artist there. You gotta handle marketing. You gotta handle promotions, which I am very versatile and skilled in brand ambassadoring for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? And just recognize if you don't feel rich or you haven't been rich, you, there is a point where you can be rich in popularity. And that's when it transitions to making sure that, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to be presenting yourself to the public like sluggish, you don't care, or you don't know that you're a celebrity and people just is coming at you like all kind of different ways. And you got to realize that, hey, I'm a celebrity now. So how you act and how you carry yourself, of course, that's going to stuff is going to start spreading. You know what I'm saying? So this, you know, what I'm saying that's basically, you know, what I'm saying most of what really happened. And you know, I forgot a bunch of stuff. You know, talking about this. You know, I forgot about the movie sets. You know, what I'm saying the game ins and outs. You know, what I'm saying the pain. You know, what I'm saying being out in the cold. You know what I'm saying? Bleeding on the beaches, you know what I'm saying? Going through SEAL training or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And um, there's a lot of stuff I left out. And you know what I'm saying? But this this whole interview is just basically, you know what I'm saying? A whole, 
you know what I'm saying, a whole explanation of who I am, who I am, Evan Wreck and Marsh, Mario, you know what I'm saying, this is just a whole explanation of, you know, the stuff that I've been through, the things that I've done, the traveling, what I saw, you know, mistakes, you know what I'm saying, so hopefully somebody watches this and they get a kind of better understanding of what's really going on out there, okay, so yeah. Hey, what up, A-Town? You know what I mean? Hey, what's up, Southside, Eastside, Westside, Northside? You know what I'm saying? Make sure you don't come back. H-Town, make sure you get your character. Sunday, Wednesday. It'll be over every day, really. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You know what I'm talking about? But the days you want to be at, Sunday and Wednesday. You know what I'm talking about? That Lady BG night. What up, Great Face? What up, all y'all players? I see y'all out there on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? I see y'all boys over there getting the repertoire all set up. Know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Set up shop, baby. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to let y'all know we broadcast the TV show live Sunday night over here in Karen.